अन्न कर्मा में दिव्यम जो व्यक्ति तत्ता तत्ला देहम पुनर्जन्म नैति माने थी कौन किया लाल कृष्ण से दैट दे प्रोसेस ऑफ माय बर्थ एंड दे प्रोसेस ऑफ माय एक्टिविटी दे आर ऑल ट्रांसेंडेंट एंड एनी वन हु कैन अंडरस्टैंड the transcendental activities appearance disappearance of the supreme personality of god hai then the result is that tatta deham punarjanma naiti mane ki kaun the the result is that anyone who understands these transcendental activities of the supreme law tatata in truth the result is that he becomes a liberated person tatta deham tatta means by quitting by giving up this present material body he at once is transferred to the spiritual world tatta deham punar janma nahi thi he does not require to come back here in this material world to have this material body he at once develops his own spiritual body just like krishna this is the process simply by understanding the transcendental activities and the appearance and disappearance he becomes fully spiritualized and the result is that he at once but at, he does not get the spiritual body is already existing i am spirit i have got my spiritual body but that body is now covered by this matter so by understanding the transcendental activities of shri krishna by shri krishna consciousness one can become liberated and what is the result of that liberation that is also spoken in the eighth chapter of bhagavad gita the lord says maam upeta kaunteya my dear arjun kaunteya sana kunti he is not it that maam upeta any one who comes to me maam upeta kaunteya dukhalam asathatam nabhuvanti that he does not come again to the material world which is dukhalam dukhalam a place of misery this material world is satisfied by the supreme personality of god as the place of misery now if this place is made for that purpose just to give us misery is only how you can make it a place of happiness the place is meant for that purpose so lord krishna says that someone anybody who comes back to me he hasn't got to come back again to this place of misery सत्ता दे हम पुनर्जन्म नी मा मे एंड एन इज से मा मुपे सतम पिया दुखालय मसा सतम दिस प्लेस इज फुल ऑफ मिजर वी आर डिलूडेड इल्यूशन वी आर एक्सेप्टिंग दिस प्लेस 
as permanent settlement. We are making plans, so many plans to make a permanent settlement. But the Lord says, it is not only full of misery, asāsatam, you cannot remain here permanent. However, make, make your plan to leave here permanently. You cannot leave here. You have to give up. You can spoil your energy for making this material world very comfortable. Or you may leave for some years very comfortably, but cruel death will come and snatch you from all comfortable position and put you into another position which is beyond in your control. You cannot say that I have made my position very secure and very comfortable with great endeavor by advancement of economic development, by advancement of material science. Let me remain here. I am very happy. The time will say, no, that will not be allowed. You must live immediately, immediately without this. You know, your President Kennedy, he was going in a procession and the time came and he had to leave everything at once, at once, without any hesitation. You cannot hesitate. So we are in the grief of the material nature. However, we may declare ourselves that we are independent. We are not independent. We are dependent, completely dependent. We may foolishly mislead ourselves by the sense of independence. No, we are not independent. We are completely under the control of the material nature. The material nature is so strong that it is very difficult to get out of the entanglement. But there is a way. That is also said in the Bhagavad Gita. Mami vaja prabhadyante, maya nitam sarantate. Anyone who surrenders unto me, the whole process, the whole process of material activities, material nature is going on under this principle that we are required to go back to the eternal world to get our eternal life and eternal blissful knowledge. These things are awaiting us. But if we do not try, do not endeavor for attaining that sublime position and spoil our desired energy in making an adjustment of this temporary material world, that is our foolishness. You will, you will find in the seventh chapter of Bhagavad Gita, the Lord says, Namam prapadyante mūrha duskitino narādhama māyaya aparita jñāna āsudi bhāvamāsrita. Lord says that there are persons who are duskitino, duskitino and miscreants, mūrha, foolish. Duskitina Murha and Naradhama and the lowest of the human kind. And Maya of Ritabjana and they have been plundered of their real knowledge by the stringent laws of material nature. Such people do not come unto me. So these things are if we study Bhagavad Gita, we have to Take it, Bhagavad Gita, as it is. We cannot 
give our own interpretation just to suit our purpose. This thing already been explained in this fourth chapter that it is understood by the parampara system, by the disciplic succession. So we have to take up this knowledge from the disciplic succession. And this Bhagavad Gita was spoken some millions of years before to the Sun God, that is also stated. And the Sun God instructed this Bhagavad Gita again to Manu, Manu the Kaku, and in this way this is coming by disciple succession. But during the time of Purukshetra war, that great philosophy of yoga system of Bhagavad Gita was lost, and therefore Lord Krishna again said to Arjuna, Therefore, if we want to understand Bhagavad Gita, then we have to understand as Arjuna understood. That is the process. So here the Lord says that uh, janma karma may be gone. My appearance and disappearance. Mark this word, appearance and disappearance. Birth and death is not applicable to law. Birth and death is applicable to this material birth. This material body has its birth, and the material body has its death, dissolution. But the spiritual body is eternal. It has neither death nor birth. Therefore, the spiritual body, the exact language to be used, appearance and disappearance. I have several times spoken in this meeting, just like the sun. The sun disappears and appears. For the sun there is no question of birth and death, because sun is eternal. Anything eternal. So when the Lord comes, it is just like the sun appears and the sun disappears. It does not mean because we do not see Krishna just now in our presence. Of course, in transcendental sense, when we acquire that transcendental sense, we see Krishna through this Bhagavad Gita. The Bhagavad Gita is Krishna. It's not, Bhagavad Gita is not different from Krishna. That is the uh, I mean the uh, sense of absolute knowledge. In the absolute world there is no difference between the person and the world. Just like this uh, tape recorder, it is being recorded. My words or my songs are being recorded. But they are different they, uh, from me. This is dual, the world of duality. But as the absolute world, there is no such difference. That's why like you are chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. This name Krishna and the personality Krishna is the same. It is the same. Hare Krishna means when I hear sound, the transcendental sound vibration, Krishna. That means Krishna is on my tongue, on my ear. Therefore, if we chant this vibration of transcendental sound with devotion and with attention, that is the highest type of meditation and yoga. And very easy. The process is that you chant Hare Krishna and exactly the same sound is here. So your 
mind is concentrated on this Krishna, and Krishna is not different. This sound Krishna is not different from person Krishna. Therefore, when we chant Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, it is as good as Krishna. Therefore, it is stated here that mind, appearance, disappearance, and activity and glory, that vibham, vibham means transcendental. They, are not, they do not belong to this world of duality. This world is of duality. But transcendental means that it is above. Above this dual, dualism, it is the absolute world. So anyone who understands this fact that Krishna is not different from this sound Krishna, Krishna is not different from this Bhagavad Gita, Krishna is not different from the from anything which is connected with Krishna. These things have to be understood. The whole world is the representation of the energy that we learn in the seventh chapter. Is the manifestation of the energy of Krishna. And it has been described there are two kinds of energies the lower energy and the higher energy. And the higher energy is the living entities, just like we are. We living entities, we belong to the higher uh, nature of the Supreme Law. Jiva Bhuta Mahabhavo Jayadam Bhajati Jagat. This world is moving. This world is made of lower nature, material, and the higher nature is the living entity. So anything which is connected with Krishna, it becomes to the higher nature. Even in these material things, if it is dotted with Krishna consciousness, then it turns into higher nature. The example as several times repeated, just like you put a, an iron rod in the fire, it becomes warm, warmer, and gradually it becomes red hot. When it is red hot, it is transformed into the nature of fire. It is no longer iron. Similarly, if you constantly remain in Krishna consciousness, you at once transfer yourself to the higher nature of Krishna. And that is the only way. And if we can die in higher nature, then this formula, Tatta Deham Punarjanma Naiti, oh, he does not come back again to this material world. So we shall have to try, we shall have to practice this Krishna consciousness in such a way that we shall permanently exist in higher nature. And if we can die in that higher nature, then our place in the transcendental world is reserved. That is the whole thing. In, in India, there is a common saying. They say, Bhajankara, Pujankara, Motte Janle Hai. The meaning is that however you may meditate upon, you may be a very great meditator, or you may be a great religionist or yogi or a very learned scholar, or whatever you may be. But everything will be tested at the time of your death. How far you have made 
progress that will be tested at the time of your death. That is also explained in the Bhagavad Gita. Janajana Bhapi Smanan Loki Tadatante Kalevaram. Ante. Ante means at the end. Because this body is your to end. Antavati Mede Ha. This body is Antava. It is destined to be ended. As sure as death. But Mitta Sutta Sarivina. Sarina and the spirit spark which is occupying this body, that is nitta, that is eternal. So whole process is that the eternal has to get rid of this non-permanent material contact. And he has to take leave for the spiritual world. So the whole process is that during our present existing life we have to practice in such a way that we remain constantly on the higher nature, on the spiritual nature. Exactly in the same way, just like you put the iron rod in the fire and make it warmer, 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 and so long it does not get red hot. So it becomes fire. This is practical. In the same way, you have to put yourself in such a way that you are always in, constantly in the higher nature. Not that for one hour, two hours, we make this association. We try to be in higher nature. And after leaving this place, we again turn to the Lord. No. We should always, whatever else we hear from here, from this place, we should try to understand clearly, without any doubt. Just like Lord Krishna says here, Tattade Hang Punajanma Naiti Maniti Kante. The anyone who understands Krishna's appearance, disappearance and activities, all these transcendental things, he goes back to the kingdom of God and after leaving this body. Now this fact should be clearly understood. So I'm trying to make you understand it clearly. How it can be possible? This is possible in this way that you have to think of Krishna already. How is that that Krishna appears in his transcendental body and how he disappears. So everything scrutinizing we have to understand. In the Bhagavad Gita you find that with the pranipatena, paripasnena, sevaya, one has to learn all these things from the person who is in the knowledge of these things. It is not that simply by purchasing one Bhagavad Gita we understand everything. No. That will be pranipatena, pranipasnena, sivaya. You have to approach a person who is in the knowledge of the things. Without this, you cannot understand. There is recommendation. It is essential in the, uh, I would say, in the Vedas also, Kathopanisha. This is Say exclusively, Satma, Satma, Guru Prabhupada, Jigyasu, Seo, Tamam. Satma. Satma means therefore. Therefore means something has been said before. What is that? Satma, Guru Prabhupada, Jigyasu, Seo, Tamam. As soon as we began to ask, about the higher nature. That propensity should be awakened. In the lower nature we are busy in the matter of eating, sleeping, defending and sense gratification. So we should not be satisfied simply remaining in the lower nature. 
the human life is made for developing the higher nature. The Vedanta Sutra therefore says, Sathata Brahma Jitnyasa, now, now you have got the developed consciousness of human body. Now, this is the time for asking about the Supreme Brahma. So this higher nature has to be developed. This association, this transcendental association is meant for developing that higher nature. Higher nature. We, we, we must understand that higher nature, that it, as it is, it is recommended in the Vedas, that tadvigyanātham sa guru meva vijatshe samitpāni sūtyam brahmanishtam. And again, in the Srimad Bhāgavata, it is said that uh, tasmāt guruṁ prapadyeta jīgyāsu śreya uttamam. In all these scriptures this is said. Without approaching a person who can teach you of the higher nature, you cannot develop. It is not possible to acquire. You have got the higher nature, but to invoke that higher nature, he requires the assistance of a person who is in the higher nature. That is the common. If somebody says that I don't require any help of any spiritual master, that is wrong. That is wrong. You will find all the great persons. So far our Vedic culture is concerned. Great learned scholars, just like Sankaracharya, perhaps you have heard the name of Sankaracharya, Ramanujacharya, Madhyacharya, Nimbarka, Lord Chaitanya. In India, there have been many, many great scholars. Even Krishna, Krishna, He is the Supreme Personality of God. He had His spiritual master because He wanted to show the example. He did not require any, um, uh, any, any circumstances to acquire knowledge from any other. But because He was playing just like a human being, so he set the example that he accepted his spiritual master. And there are instances. So similarly, Lord Chaitanya also, he accepted spiritual master. Sankaracharya accepted spiritual master. That is the system. Evam parampara prata nyuna raja vidu. The disciple succession must be accepted. At that time we are trying to understand from Krishna. Arjuna, Arjuna is trying to understand. Arjuna also said to Krishna, Shishas Teham Sadhimam Prapannam, just I am surrendering unto you. Accept me as your disciple, Shishya. Shishya means disciple. Shishya. Shishya, this, uh, this is a grammatical word, Sasdhatu. Sasdhatu, it is a verb from his, this word Shishya comes. Shishya means one, one who accepts voluntarily the disciplinary measures from the hierarchy. He is called a Shishya. So, in order to acquire, in order to be situated in that higher nature, we have to approach a personality like Krishna or his representative and so the best thing is that Arjun, Arjun, uh, he got this instruction from Bhagavad Gita and he developed that higher nature. So we have to take from Arjun as it is. So we have to keep ourselves always in the higher nature. Then the result will be that at the time of death, at the end, Tattā Deham, around seventy years old, the my days are counted. So I have to give up this body. The warning is already there. So we have to prepare ourselves. Just like when going some out of station from New York to California, 
you are, if you wanted to go, you have to make your preparation, uh, say, fortnight before, visiting the seat and making all arrangements. Similarly, we must know that we have to leave this body and we must prepare for that. Unless we don't prepare for that, all of a sudden if death comes, then our whole life is small. That is the whole system. So we have to think of Krishna. This is the very easiest process. There are how, what are the activities, how Krishna appears, how Krishna disappears, what are the nature of Krishna's activities. So we must try to understand this. The Janma Karma Medibam, Jujana Titatpata. These inquisitiveness, the appearance and disappearance of Krishna and his activities, this inquisitiveness is transcendental inquiry. So we must know him from a person who are in the knowledge, and that way we shall be able to put ourselves constantly in Krishna consciousness. And the result will be that Pattadeham, by quitting this body, we shall be at once transferred to the transcendental world. This is the problem. Now, in the next sloka, Krishna says that Vitarāga-bhaya-krodha, uh, Vitarāga-bhaya-krodha, manmayāma-mupāsita, bhavo gyanata pasa utamad bhava madata Krishna says that uh, Arjun, in the past there were many sages who vitarāga bhaya krodha after surpassing three stages of existence, when they came to Krishna consciousness, they were liberated. Vitarāga bhaya krodha. Now, what is this rāga? Rāga bhaya krodha. Rāga means attachment. Attachment. And vita rāga bhaya. Bhaya means fear. And krodha means anger. So these three stages are there in our life. And what are these? Rāga attachment in the lowest stage of our life, when we do not know what I am, I consider this body myself this deluded conception of life, uh, this is deluded conception. And when you have got too much attachment for this deluded conception of life, that is called Rāga. Rāga. Mostly people generally, they are acting in this material world with this conception of life, that I am this material body. So, they are working whole day and night for making a comfortable uh, life of this material body. Uh, so they are born in the state of rāga, attachment, attachment. And the next stage is bhaya, bhaya. And uh, what is that bhaya? Fear. Now, that's a, uh, uh, please don't talk. Uh-huh. Bhaya means that uh, there are persons, transcendentalists, who are culturing a transcendental knowledge, but they are very much afraid of conceiving that there is another world which is spiritual world, and that is also similar like this world, and the personality of God is there, and we have to go there and we have to leave as a servitor. So we carry the ideas of this world to that world. Therefore we are afraid. There are many transcendentalists who like the impersonal conception of the Supreme Truth. As soon as personal conception of the Supreme Truth is presented there, they are afraid of. Oh, it is something material. It is not real. 
this is called Bhaya. But actually it is not that. Actually, this material world is described in the Bhagavad Gita as the perverted reflection of the actual spiritual world. You will find in the fifteenth chapter that this material world is described as a obverted tree whose root is upwards and the branches are downwards. Have you any experience of this obverted tree whose root is upward and the branches and the leaves are downwards? Have you seen any tree like that? You have seen it, but you have heard about it. You have seen when you see a tree on the bank of a river or bank of a reservoir of water, you will find the reflection of the tree, just the opposite smarta. So similarly, this word in the fifteenth chapter, it is described that as an upverted tree. That means the real tree is there. The real tree is there. Just like the example is given and several times that uh, the impersonalists, they describe this word as false, as false. But simply describing this word as false is not sufficient. What is the reality we must know? The, generally the example is uh, cited, such in the darkness, when you see a curling row, you misunderstand it, that it is a snake. But actually it is not the snake. Now, this, this concession of a snake comes where from? Unless there is a real snake, how you conceive that it is a snake? That rope is false, that's not life. That rope is not snake, but there is real snake. Otherwise, how you get the concession of the snake? Just try to follow it. Without having the real snake, you cannot get this concession of snake. Similarly, we say that this world is false or shadow. The shadow Without being the reality, how there can be possibility of shadow? If there is no reality of my hand, how the shadow of the hand can be there? So this world is temporary shadow that is accepted, but there is the real world which has no distraction. This world is destructive. It is dissolved, just like our body it is temporary, but it will be dissolved. Anything material that has sought a birth, a, a, a stay for some time, a byproduct, a growth, a dwindling, and then vanish. That is the nature. Anything, just like this body, it was born from the mother's womb at a certain time, and it is staying for some time, and the body has got some byproducts. Like children, we have got some children, the byproduct. Then it is dwindling, just like I am getting older, anyone, everyone, we are getting older. And at the last, it is vanished. Similarly, the whole material world, it has a time of its uh, appearance, it grows, it makes so many varieties of byproducts, it dwindles and again vanishes. But Bhagavad Gita gives you an information. Parastasmasubhavanna vakta vakta sanatam. Beyond this material world, which is subjected to these rules of six changes, there is another world, which is sanatana. Actually there is an existence of a an eternal nature, like this nature which you are experiencing. And that nature, transcendental nature, the whole Bhagavad Gita scheme means to take you back to that transcendental nature. Because you are transcendental, 
you are eternal, you are blissful, you are full of knowledge, now you are covered, now you have to go back to that eternal world which is full of knowledge, full of bliss. So we have to prepare in that way. That is the policy of the human life. Lord Krishna says, the Vitarava, Vitarava, Vita means one who has been able to give up this attachment. Rāga means the attachment of this material world. So here Krishna also gives us an instruction that Vitarava have prodha. There are persons who are too much attached to this material activity. They are called Rāga. They are in the atmosphere of Rāga. And there are persons who are atmosphere of fear. Oh, again we have got to a personal life. Ah, they are afraid of personal life. They want to make impersonal everything. That is called bhaya. And the first, second, and the third is krodha. Ah, they do not believe in any philosophy. Ah, let us commit suicide. Let us annihilate all this material existence. So we have to surpass, we have to surpass these three stages of attachment and uh, fearfulness and prodha and anger. Just, just like somebody commits suicide, when he is disgusted with this life, he commits suicide. That is called prodha by anger. So we have to surpass all these things. The Lord Krishna said, Vitarayana Bhaya Prodha. After surpassing these three stages of life, Vitarayam Bhayaprada, Manamaya, Mamupasita, one who is constantly conscious of me, Manamaya, and Mamupasita, and accepting the center of my protection, Mamupasita, Bahu Gyanatamusa, there are many sages who, by culture of knowledge, and and Spena, Bhavo, Gana, Puta, are purified by that, that process. Mother Bhava Madhata, and they attain uh, my superior nature. My superior nature. Just like the same example, just like putting the iron rod in the fire, and the iron rod becomes hot, red hot, gets the nature of fire. Similarly, if we constantly in Krishna consciousness, uh, being transcendental to these stages of haya and fear and attachment and krodha, anger, if we put ourselves completely under Krishna consciousness, then it is, uh, it is very easy to attain the superior nature of Krishna. That is the formula uh, given here. That um, superior, how to attain that superior nature? Vitarāga bhaya krodha manmaya maa upāsita, maa upāsita. That is the main thing. One has to take center of Krishna. Maa mi vaja prakadhanti. This very thing, everywhere you find this Bhagavad Gita, that Krishna is chasing on his personal feature. Maa mi vaja prakadhanti. Anyone who takes center of me, anyone who thinks of me, manmana, man, havamad, bhakta. So these things are there. Uh, simply we have to take up this thing, Krishna, uh, then everything, the whole solution is there. Jeevathamaṁ prapaddhante, next verse is, Jeevathamaṁ prapaddhante, tāṁ sasīva bhajāmaham, mamo vatvāṁ vatvāṁte, Manishya Pāsya Sarvasa. Now Krishna says, there are three kinds of transcendentalists. What are they? The impersonalist and the localized yogi and the devotees. There are three kinds of transcendentalists. What are the impersonalists? Impersonalist means this yearning, those who are trying to understand what is Brahma and try to negativate this, uh, this material world. 
नेति ने दिस इज नॉट ब्रह्म ब्रह्म फ्रॉम दिस मैट देर फॉर जैन एंड देर आर जोगी जोगी मीन्स दो ट्राइंग टू फोकस ऑल अटेंशन टू दि सुपर सोल विच इज विद इन आर हार्ट दैट इज कॉल जोग योगी ज्ञानी एंड भक्त डिवोटिव दो फोकसे ऑल देर कॉन्सेंट्रेशन ऑन द सुप्रीम पर्सनैलिटी ऑफ गॉड एंड कृष्ण तो दीज थ्री क्लासेस ऑफ टाइम दे आर ऑल ट्रांसेंडेंटल दे आर नॉट मेटीरियल मेटीरियल इज दे आर कंसर्न विद दिस मैटर ओनली दे आर वेरी मच अटैच टू लॉर्ड इगो फॉर दिस मेटीरियल नेचर एंड शॉर्ट डिस्क्रिप्शन ऑफ द मेटीरियल But the transcendental, they are our these attached people. They are detached, but they are what we consider as our transcendental idea. Right? That is stated in Shrimad Bhagavatam, "Bhavanti tattvamita tattvam jagjana madhyam brahmeti paramatmeti bhagavani ti sarvati tatta tatta the absolute truth, absolute truth." is non dual and that absolute truth is experienced in three ways what are they the brahma the the all pervading impersonal feature brahma and brahmeti parmatmeti parmatmeti means the super soul brahmeti parmatmeti and bhagwani bhagwani means the personal self god Now these three conceptions of life have been analyzed in various places, and I will give you a short description. Just like the sun, you see the sun every morning. What do you see? You see the sun shine. One feature is the sun shine. Another feature is the sun disk. and another feature is if you are able to go into the sun planet you see something else that we have got have no experience uh, but we can see that uh, sun sign and the localized sun disk but what is there within the sun planet uh, no nobody has explained so far material science is concerned but from vedic literature we have got Uh, information of the sun planet also that there is a, a supreme deity which is uh, which is who is known as the sun god and uh, uh, all the inhabitants there they have got their body of fire and the whole planet is fiery that is also material we uh, and uh, there is no reason to disbelieve it because the whole material uh, world is composed of fire elements that are uh, inferior nature earth water fire air ether mind ego intellect uh, so the sun planet is predominated with fire fire is also matter it is also material so that as we have got experience uh, we can test experience from what we see daily And there we have got three different vision of the sun. Although the sun sign is spread all over the universe, you cannot accept the sun sign as important than the sun disk. Look alike. Which one is important? The sun sign is important, or the localized disk? Ah, uh, the planet is important. The localized planet is. Uh, similarly, the impersonal feature of law which is known as brahma or oh, that is not very much important we find in the bhagavad gita brahma no aham pratistha i am the source of this effulgence of brahma so this is one feature but that is transcendental when one thinks of brahma conception of uh, of the uh, absolute truth that is also transcendental when one thinks of the localized aspect of the supreme soul that is also transcendental and one one when one thinks of the supreme personality of god that is also transcendental 
So here it is said, Ji Dathamang Prabhadante, Tam Shatimu Bhajamaham. Mama Matvan Vatnante Manusha Pata Sarvasa. Anywhere, any handsome person who is interested in the transcendental feature of the Absolute Truth, they must be either the impersonalist or the localized or must be devotee of the God. So these three features are there presented of Krishna, Sanskrit, and how they are conceived and what are the different reasons try to explain in the next meeting. Uh, now you can put your questions. They have to take shelter of the Veda, just like uh, Sankarasa. Sankarasa is impersonal and uh, we, the Vaishnava, there are two, two classes of philosophers in India. One is impersonalist and the other is personalist. So we, we, so far we are concerned, we are personalist. And Sankaracharya is impersonalist. Now, although there, we are two classes, impersonalist and personalist, we take Veda as the medium of knowledge. We may give different interpretation. That is a, uh, another thing. But either the party of Sankaracharya or the party of uh, Vaishnava and uh, Acharya, they take the Vedanta Sutra, the Vedanta philosophy as the medium. But Lord Buddha, although we accept him, as the incarnation of God, and he was born in India, and he propagated his philosophy from India, but, but because he denied to accept the Vedic principle, therefore he is known as it. Because he, Buddha, did not accept the Vedic principle. He denied. And there was reason why he did not. That is a secret thing. That secret because his whole philosophy was to stop animal killing. Animal killing. Now, in the baby scripture, you will find animal sacrifice is recommended. So, he wanted to preach stop animal killing. Now, if there is evidence from the Vedas that animal can be killed under certain circumstances, then his whole teaching becomes topical. Then he was obliged to deny the authority of the Vedas. And because he did not accept the authority of the Vedas, the Vedantis and the followers of Vedas, they call the Buddhist philosophy as a Christian. This is the explanation. So, man is accepted as atheist who does not believe in the tenets of the Veda, that is the Sanam Sarasthana Sapeti. It may be a sound philosophy or whatever it may be, but uh, atheism, uh, one who does not believe in the uh, authority of the Veda, they are called atheists. Yes, this is explained in Bhagavad Gita in the seventh chapter. Matter is described as the lower nature of the Supreme Law. And uh, the spirit, soul, or the living entities, they are called the higher nature. Now, my present position is that I belong to the higher nature. Now I am entrapped with the lower nature. And the whole mission of my life should be to get out of the lower nature and be uh, uh, installed again in my arms. That is the whole thing. 